get into the architecture in HDFS, we have the concept of masters and slaves. So we basically have one master and many, many slaves. There's no limit for this slave limit, guys. Or there's no ratio between your master and your slave configuration. You can have one used to x and x can be anything. We call the master as your NN or name node. That is how it is called and NN is how it is denoted name node okay I'll tell you why it is called name node and all the slaves individually are called DNs or data nodes now let me discuss what a name, name node does this is how your architecture looks like guys name node is one physical machine okay now since I am the tutor let me say that I am the name node my machine is the name node okay and you are all this individually on a physical machine there is no demarcation okay now what your name now does or what you guys do is that you contact me at say a predefined time interval by default it's three seconds okay and each one of us don't even know that there's another person who's existing meaning which each one of us are working in isolation okay so, so this is how stuff is each one of us are in isolation okay each one of us ping me at every at a predefined time interval that is by default three seconds what do you ping me what you ping me is that um, you ping me your health how is your file system health and how much is the free space that you've got and some essential details that I must be knowing Okay, so since I am like your mother, I must be knowing the details of all of you guys who are my children. So something of that sort. Okay. What does name node do? And why is that name name node? Now, name node is the master and it will manage the namespace of your HDFS. Am I clear? Namespace is the file directory. Now, like this, right? So from the root there's a folder called root uh, and from the root there is a folder called home and within home you've got uh, say users and within users you've got uh, Kaja and you have got in the same directory you've got Zunita and then you've got Srinivas and so on. So to manage all this the file directory, what, are, what is the file structure, how much is the free space in the root directory, how much is the free space in the home directory, what is the user permission of Khaja, what is the user permission of Sunita, does she have executable access, does she uh, does Srinivas have only read access and so on and so forth. So all these details are stored in the form of metadata at the name nodes end. Okay. The entire HDFS, see guys, all these things are not in a single machine, right? So the space that Khaja has occupied is say one petabyte, okay? So it is impossible for Khaja's files to be in a single machine. A part of it will be here, a part of it will be in this machine, a part of it will be in this machine and so on and so forth. So it's just a part, okay? And the name node will have a metadata of all the systems put together so it will have the file structure of all the, of the entire DFS that is distributed file system. Am I making myself clear? Now if how does the name node have a, a consolidated file system because each and every data node that is each and every slave is trying to interact with the name node at every three seconds interval and this is called heartbeat. When a data node interacts with the name node, we call it heartbeat. So heartbeats are a communication signal which is sent between your data node and your name node at an interval of three seconds by default. It can be configured, it can be changed. Okay, but by default, for every three seconds, it's like a data node saying to the name node, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, and so on. So along with saying I'm alive, it will send a few files. That is it will send its metadata 
Okay, what it will do, what it will send the metadata is that whatever files it has got, say I'm talking about this particular data node now, whatever data it has got, what is the file structure in, it, in this particular data and what is the free space, it will send to this for every three seconds. So that the data, the name node will have the latest, latest data, latest metadata. Okay, one more thing. <coughs> The name node stores its metadata in the RAM. Okay, as far as name node is concerned, it stores everything in its RAM. Meaning, which when you choose a configuration for name node, you have to choose such a machine which has high amount of RAM. Basically, any name node with which has say 16 to 30, 16 is bare minimum, 16 GB to 32 GB of RAM would serve okay. I mean, would serve good. Okay, 32 GB is well, well enough, but 16 GB is fine. Okay, so the RAM should be this much. It, we really don't care about the uh, hard disk because as far as main node is concerned, we are talking about in-memory stuff. In-memory is storing it in RAM. Okay, why are we storing metadata in RAM? Because of faster access. Am I clear? When a client approaches your whole Hadoop system, what he does is he picks your metadata and for that, the access should be fast and that is why name node stores in the RAM. Now let me include another component in this ecosystem, the client. Here is the client or let me show it in triangle. Here is the client, okay. He wants to store data in the Hadoop ecosystem. So what he does is he connects to me. He accesses my metadata, okay. And based on what my metadata says, that is how much free space is there in each and individual system, I will give him command that boss you can use so and so particular data nodes and then he will connect to that particular data node and he will transfer data. This is how a client interacts with HDFS. Okay. So as far as name node is concerned, all it does is that it will just store metadata. It won't have any actual data. All the actual data is stored in data nodes. Data nodes are the slaves. Name node is the master. Okay. When you talk about actual data in Hadoop, it is all handled in data nodes. Name node is just like a master, it's like a lazy boost. What it does is it just, hand, it just takes care of the metadata and stores it and it's happy. That's all. Now what happens if the name node is down? Hadoop's first version, that's Hadoop 0.20 on it I believe, it did not have any backup to the secondary name, uh, it did not have any backup to the name node which made name node a single point of failure, SPOF we call it, okay, all those data architects out here, SPOF, single point of failure, why, because if the name node failed, there would be no way to learn where the data is stored and what all, I mean in what all physical data nodes, what all data is stored, why, because I told you, all these data nodes work in isolation, they do not have contact with each other, Okay, all these data nodes work in isolation and they are blinded, blindfolded people. They do not know what data they have, they do not know what, how many clients data they have got and anything. Okay, it is the name node who consolidates the, all of the data nodes and tells that okay your data is in this, this, this and this data node. But otherwise the data node themselves will not know. So it's like the name node who is actually the king pin here and when the name node is down there is no way we can understand where the data is, how many segments the data has been split and where all the data has been stored. Okay. So you have to have a backup for a name node and if the name node is down the only reason might be network right. So you cannot prevent your network from being down, there is every possibility that your network can be down. So the only thing that you can do is replication, the replication of your name mode, whatever contents it has got, you have to replicate it. So what I was trying to tell you is that in the first version of Hadoop, there was no backup for this, meaning which when the name node was down, your whole Hadoop architecture was down, okay. See this diagram, what is the base, HDFS is the base, whatever tools you use will indirectly query on the data which is available in HDFS. How does this tool know where the data is? It does not know. What it will do is, it will contact the name node. 
and the name node will say okay you want to query this all data is it okay so this all data is available in terms of splits in data node 1 data node 8 data node 25 and data node 36 go enjoy so this is what your name node will do when your name node is down then whatever code you write it cannot you know hit on any data because no one knows where the data is other than the name node am i clear guys so this is the function of the name node now what is a data node and what does it do a data node is basically a slave and it will store data it will store data for you okay so whatever data is sent it gets split and then it is stored okay there's no way that two data nodes communicate with each other so the work is done in parallel the name node will have will have the exact details of where all the data is now in Hadoop version 2.0 they had come up with many concepts and one thing which they made a constant was the introduction of a secondary name node okay what the secondary name node do will do is that whatever your name node has it will take a snapshot of it and will keep it with itself okay so in the event of a name node failure this you can use this uh, snapshots to load it into your ram and make it the new name node now the name node is the heart of a hdfs file system point number one point number two it will keep the directory tree of all the files in the file system okay so it will keep it will maintain what uh, the directory tree in your hdfs file system on the whole is and it will track where across the cluster the file data is kept it does not store the data at all it only stores a metadata okay so it does not have any actual data it will just have metadata of which uh, data which slave has which data that's all now when a client application talk to the name node whenever they wish to locate a file or when they want to add or copy a file they have to talk to the name node when a client has to interact with Hadoop it is the name node which they have to interact to and not any other element okay when a client has to write a file copy a file read a file execute a file whatever it is the name node will have to come the communication will have to be established between the client and the name node okay so that is the importance of your name node now the name node responds to successful requests with the client by returning a list of relevant data nodes when a client wants a, to read a particular data set okay so what he does is that he does not have no any clue where the data is stored okay so what he'll do is this is the client or no triangle this is the client this is your name node and this is your data node assume that i have only three data nodes okay so your client wants to interact with your whole hadoop ecosystem this is your whole Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. He does not know where the data is. So what he will do is he will respond, he will ping your name node. Boss, I want to access my data which I had stored with you last month. Give me back my data. So what the name node will do, he will quickly scan his metadata and he will send it. Boss, here you go. Enjoy. Okay. So he he now, the client now has the list of wherever his data is once he gets a response what he will do is that's all the connection is cut there's no uh, once the name node sends out whatever the data uh, client needs that's all the connection is cut now he will be directly able to contact the data node the client will directly be able to contact the data node whatever the name node has given him he's given him a response right that response will contain a list of data nodes so he will directly contact that data node and and he will do whatever he wants to do okay the client can even be us okay uh, assume that tomorrow we are installing Hadoop on the machines and we want to see whatever files we have sent in that case when we want to see we become the client we indirectly ask only the name node the name node will send us back the response from the data node okay this is how stuff